All right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming up here and uh, getting on our on live uh, here. I'd like to call our December tenth meeting of the County Planning Commission to order. Right, we're all set. Yeah, we're ready. Right. Is there any public comment? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming up here and. Uh, I've got uh, feedback. Is that coming? Uh, yeah. We'll call our December tenth meeting of the County Planning. We're delay. Right, we're all set. Yeah, we're ready. Right. Is there any public comment? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for. Coming up there, and uh, I've got uh, feedback. Is that coming? Joe is coming to fix it. We're all set. Yeah, we're ready. Keep repeating. <laughs> it likes my voice. Yeah. <laughs> Keep repeating. <laughs> Good. I Good. Think got it now. All right. Yep. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Is there any public comment? Hearing none. Let's move on to approval of our minutes. Um, we had a copy. Uh, they received a copy of our minutes from the uh, uh, November meeting. Additions, corrections. Hearing none. Entertain a motion to approve. I'll, I'll make, make that motion, motion, Mr. Chairman. John Poshis. John, seconded by Jerry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Um, bills. Steve, could you briefly go through the bills quickly? Uh, everything normal. The SAFA bill for October uh, 572. Uh, our comprehensive plan, long range plan, Luzerne County, two bills for $5,400. Uh, EBA Engineering's, our GIS support. And for some reason, the West Payment Center, which is our zoning and planning law report, they decided to send everything online and I did not get an October or November bill, but I got a notice that we didn't pay them. Uh, so I have no idea where the email went. So I told them to send paper copies to make it easier. Yeah. Anybody have any questions on the bill? Hearing none, entertain a motion to approve the bills. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Cindy, second. I'll second it, Bruce. I mean, Harry. Thank you, John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bills are approved. Let's move on to our communications. More grant applications. Yeah, the, uh, Liz? Yep. the entire package is uh, letters of support and uh, just correspondence that the plans meet the requirements. Uh, of zoning subdivision and those kind of things. Any noteworthy projects in there we should know about? No, I mean, again, uh, why we have to review some of these is beyond me. Uh, fixing windows or putting in roofs <coughs> has nothing to do with zoning or comprehensive plans. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and again, it's mostly the local shared money from Monroe County. Uh, there's multimodal from DCED, local oh, sheriff, okay. uh, multimodal from PennDOT, which I didn't understand because I didn't think their, their uh, window was open yet for grants, but we did get one of those. And then the, there were some other ones, um, but basically they're all the DCED local sheriff. Yeah, now, mostly LSAs. Yep. Okay. okay. Anybody have any questions on the communication? Let's move on to old business, transportation planning. Steven? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> PennDOT this year, that they did their uh, planning partners meeting a little differently. Uh, they were done virtually on two separate days. Uh, we had an afternoon session at the beginning of November, and we had a morning session at the end of the week. Um, normally, we meet in Harrisburg and or State College. It's a two and a half day affair. Um, they did it virtually, actually because of the pandemic. And um, one of the things that they were able to do was a survey question uh, through the presentation, the presenters yeah. questions. And the survey question, the demonstration question, Harry, you'll be interested in this was, who attended all of the planning partners meetings? And you're looking at them. <laughs> hey, Good for you. 
Good for you. Attaboy. Yeah, sure. 1983 was the first one. Oh, Look my God. Anything to get out of the office. Wow. Yeah, where it was? You need an award. Yep. <laughs> Harry, you remember where the first one was? Uh, I want to say Seven Springs. You're right. Was it really? Yep. <laughs> that was 100 years ago. They had it at the beginning of November, and it was 87 degrees. Yeah, we drove out there. Wow. Forever. <laughs> Um, so the, planning, yeah, the planning partners meeting went pretty good. Um, doing it, um, as I said, remotely, virtually. Um, not sure if there's going to be a spring planning partners meeting. They're undecided yet. Uh, most likely it'll be virtual because as far as we've heard, PennDOT will not be opening any of their offices until at least May. Wow. Wow. And uh, the district office, because they were under remodeling and reconstruction, uh, they're looking at July. Um, net network planning, um, Steve Solon and uh, Jay Sheckman went out and did the uh, HPMS sections this year. Uh, we had 114 sections. They got them all in on time, actually early to PennDOT. Uh, still working on the functional classification. Uh, they kind of put that on hold while they were working on HPMS. So that's... Um, that's going to be done. Uh, hopefully, functional class will be working on through December and uh, January. <clears throat> and the long range plan, I'll just hold it up. I just printed it out. It's done. Um, it's going to be going out for public comments in the next uh, week or so. Um, so We'll be emailing the links to that. You can take a look at it if you have any comments. Uh, it'll be going out to the MPO uh, board, uh, tech and um, coordinating committees and the advisory committees for any comments. And then we have to follow the 45-day uh, comment period for that, have a public, hear a public meeting, public hearing. Uh, we need to adopt it by February 4th. Oh, anybody have any questions for Steve? Dave, one question. What's the status of the, what does the PennDOT need $600 million to complete some projects this year? Okay. Um, all of the legislators, if you saw them on TV in the last couple of weeks, were all up in arms that they didn't know anything about this. We've been discussing it since February. Um, what it comes down to is with uh, the pandemic, people were working from home. They weren't traveling, which meant gas taxes were going down, along with the better uh, CAT standards, uh, which are you know getting better mileage on your cars. You're not using as much gas. So PennDOT foresaw this problem all the way back in February. We actually talked about it at our planning partners meeting in February. Um, what it comes down to is there's not enough revenue to cover all of the expenses um, I'm not sure where the disconnect was between PennDOT uh, administration and the legislature. The main thing is a lot of the funding that you think goes from the gas tax to fix roads goes to pay for the state police. Hmm. Uh, Somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30% of PennDOT's budget goes to pay for the state police. Wow. So if they had that money, they could continue doing all of the road work. Um, there is actually a survey going on on PennDOT's website right now to come up with alternative funding sources, everything from tolling certain bridges to uh, eliminating the gas tax and putting a tax on by mileage. So when you go in to get your car inspected, they would record the mileage and bill you from what the mileage was the last time you went in, what the difference is. Um, there's also congestion pricing that they're looking at in some of the bigger cities like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Um, and one of the other things that's going to create a ripple effect in less gas taxes is the increase in the use of electric vehicles. Because right. they don't pay a gas tax when they're using the same roads. So are we going to borrow the money to finish these projects or are we going to like just borrow some of the money to finish some of them? I mean, what, any idea yet? No idea. Uh, we haven't heard anything from central office. Like I said, they're they're putting out these surveys now to try and come up with alternatives, but it, whatever they come up with isn't going to be immediate. And I don't know what the legislature is looking at doing. Uh, I saw something um, 
through the governor's office one of the uh, emails that came out that they were looking at some funding that was available through the treasurer's uh, Department of Treasury, some unobligated funding to carry over, but then they would have to repeat, replace that. So I'm not sure what they're going to do. Okay. Harry, uh, uh, on an email I got yesterday from uh, FIA, which is Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, mm -hmm. uh, it said that the, uh, I didn't get to delve into it, but it said the projects would, the construction projects underway will, will continue to be funded. Uh, there's some kind of deal they're working out, like Steve said, uh, some kind of borrowing from the or bonding or something. So, I, but the revenue that's lost is lost. They're never going to make up that gap that was not collected. So it's it, it's it's going to be a future problem that goes with the, what Steve said. So uh, about uh, alternative sources. So keep our fingers crossed. Nothing's immediate, you know. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we had any local projects that were going to be really impacted by this. And from what I understand, most of our local projects, the funding is in place. They were going to finish out. Uh, so we're not really going to have any any problems in Lackawanna County. There may be one or two in Luzerne County that are delayed. Um, but that's not definite yet. <clears throat> and, and this all stems from the fact that PennDOT has not been getting enough funding. Uh, the TFAC Commission a couple of years ago said that they needed to get somewhere in the neighborhood of seven and a half billion dollars a year to continue construction. And through all of the revenue sources, they've been getting less than half that. So even in that situation, they're not catching up to uh, what's needed to just keep the status quo. Um, any other questions for Stephen? No, just an interesting statistic, and Steve, maybe you can um, clarify this. When I worked for a very short stint at PennDOT, um, I was told that Pennsylvania has more roads than New York, New Jersey, and all the New England states combined. Correct. I, I thought that was true. That's a lot of roads. Uh, Lackawanna County, I believe, is third or fourth with the number of interstate lane miles in the Commonwealth. Wow. Um, I mean, there are some counties that have absolutely no interstates running through them. Yeah, yeah. We have five. Wow. Huh. Yep. Uh, we also lead the nation in bridges, too. Yep. That, yeah. that's, one of the, that's one of the problems with bridges. Uh, and John will verify this. The majority of bridges were built 50 to 60 years ago with the interstate construction and the lifespan of a bridge is 50 years. Yep. So um, when they were building all these interstates, they never took into account maintenance that was going to be needed and rehabilitation. Okay. Any other questions? Let's move on to our bicycle study. Okay. Another one. The bicycle study. <laughs> You'll also be getting an email link for that. Uh, once we go through and finalize it. As we know, the main thing with the bicycle study was do the low hanging fruit, what we can do quickly and cheaply to get a bicycle network in both Scranton and uh, Wilkes-Barre in the downtown. Uh, and the program or the process will go all the way up to looking at the reversal of Spruce and Linden streets downtown. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. The idea is to get the bike study adopted and to start working that into the transportation improvement program the tip process and uh, also into the 12 year and 20 year programs. So that when a construction job comes up on the roadway, we can incorporate bicycle and pedestrian uh, improvements in that, in that job. Good. Any questions on the bicycle study? Hearing none, let's move on to SAPA. See, we have a meeting today, huh? We have a meeting today at two o'clock. Yeah. Um, we haven't had a committee meeting since the last time we met, but like I said, we are having one today at two. I have been talking with Carolyn from EPD um, on the various municipalities that, that she's been working with. Uh, what I want to do today is each, each I wanted from each municipality, I want to know what the status is and I need to give them the last, the date, the last for the planning commissions to recommend so we can meet we can make this whole thing work in march clark summit i know jerry maybe you could tell me you were a little ahead of everybody you were going to pass it did you do that or we absolutely did and we also did a proclamation for denise and shannon brown 
right all their denise put an awful lot of time on work and she kept she kept this drive moving and we were grateful for that but so we just hope that uh the other boroughs and townships uh continue and yeah uh, get started thank you seems to be on track there i mean everybody's in various states um so that's why i said i wanted to get a specific um each municipality specific on what they're doing and this is your like this is the date you have to act on and then we'll meet again in mid-january to see what how everybody's doing i know we have not heard anything from don king i don't know if john you've heard anything Carolyn has not heard from Don at all either. So right now, Scranton really is the only one that we're kind of wondering what's going on with. We haven't had a planning commission meeting since since February. So Donnie and I talk about this all the time. He's he's trying to get a virtual meeting or even a uh, maybe using the greenhouse at Nayog or something. We have new members, but this is one of the items. Plus, we have some internal stuff we have to get through. So we do talk about it, but he's aware of it and uh you know i would rest assured uh, that he'll get it through you know yeah yeah and he's going to be on the the meeting this afternoon so well good you can get an update from him yep yeah great great anybody have any questions on sapa hey john thanks for joining us hey harry how are you sorry i'm running late not a problem glad you made it thank you hi dave good um, hey john <laughs> We, we started the meeting without you, Dave. <laughs> Let's move as, on to As always, please do. <laughs> I'm glad you made it, though. Stephen, real passenger? Okay, we have not really had any meetings <clears throat> during the pandemic. However, uh, you probably saw the article in the paper last mm -hmm. week about Amtrak looking at Scranton to uh, New York as an extension to their service. Um, we did send out an email to uh, Bob Morgan at the Congressman's office, uh, to Larry Malski and to Larry West about getting the committees back together. And uh, the reply to my email was they've been talking between themselves about having a meeting in January. So we'll be uh, looking to have a meeting sometime in January and get the process started again. Um, we've got a lot, as Larry Malski said, we've got a lot of stars aligning. We have a pro-rail president, um, President Biden elect. President Biden uh, rode the rails. He rode Amtrak from Delaware to Washington, so he knows the value of railroads. Uh, he's a Scranton guy. Congressman Cartwright is going to be on the Appropriations Committee with a chairmanship. Um, and now we've got Amtrak on board, so there's a lot of things lining up that hopefully this will all come together. Uh, we'll have some more information. We'll get a little better uh, handle on it at our January meeting. They're trying to make the Binghamton connection with that. Is that what the? Um, if you remember, Harry, years ago they did a study to reactivate the line from Buffalo through Binghamton to Scranton, right. and that never really went anywhere. But then there was the push from people up in the southern tier of New York, mm -hmm. service from Binghamton into Scranton into New York City. So I'm not sure uh, what they're looking at. The map that they proposed just showed from Scranton to uh, New York to Hoboken. So, might have but, a stopping point for summit, Jerry. Never know. Um, so we're not sure, you know, uh, uh, how far the line would extend. But the first thing is to get the last 21 miles in New Jersey completed. Mm -hmm. And if Amtrak is behind it, that would uh, free up a lot more federal highway, or excuse me, federal rail funding. So. Uh, everybody seems optimistic and we'll see what happens in January. Let's hope for the best. Okay. Any questions? I see we have nothing going on for hazard mitigation, huh? Still under review. They have until December 14th to give back to us. So I'm hoping within the next uh, two days since the deadline's coming up and hopefully they're not going to have too many comments that have to be addressed. Um, if they do, we have to address those. And then um, once everything's in place, we go to the commissioners for approval and then to the municipalities. All our communities are on board? Yes, all 40. Great, wow. Good, 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 good. And our Chesapeake Bay action plan? Um, we actually had, there was two meetings. I actually missed both because I had, my father had a doctor's appointment on one and then I was busy with these COVID grants that we're working on. I missed the, the next one. Um, 
I don't know if Brenda, is she still on the line? I don't know if she's got any information on this. I know they're looking, they want us to work with Susquehanna and Luzerne counties um, because they don't have enough money to fund individual counties. And um, the conservation district was supposed to be doing the, uh, the lead on this. So I'm, I, I was told there's a grant due like next week, but like I said, I missed the last two meetings. So I don't know what the, what the status is. All right. Any questions? Let's move on to our development reviews. Okay. Uh, excuse me one second, Harry. Do you have a quorum if I leave? Bruce, yes, we do. Thank you so much for attending. Bruce, have a happy uh, uh, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. Hanukkah Thank starts you. today at 5 p.m. sundown, so don't forget your Jewish friends. Yep. yep. <laughs> Thank you. See you, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, development reviews. Okay. Uh, page you see, you did a lot of development reviews, huh? What's that? Reviews. He did them all. I'll accept one. Yeah. Well, what uh, that? If you what? don't know, Joanne left us. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Only two months. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, she got a, a position in South Abington Township. Ah, hmm. which paid a lot more. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately. Hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Mary Liz was tied up doing COVID grants all month. So I was back in the uh, planning role doing subdivision land developments. And uh, well, let's go through the reviews. We'll come back to this issue when we get done with the review. Okay. Um, on page 10 and 11, Alton Borough is updating their subdivision and land development ordinance. A um, couple of things that they had in there were minor, but they had two things that really I, I hope they uh, take notice of. They have a requirement that says um, any subdivision of more than two lots requires a hearing, but they don't mention land developments. Hmm. And a million square foot warehouse has a little bit more of an impact on the community and three lots. So I, they should just uh, put the word in there that land developments are included in that. Um, one of the other things that we've run into this with a couple of municipalities of having uh, cul-de-sacs off of cul-de-sacs and how do you measure the length of the cul-de-sac? And I'm just recommending that they take the overall length of all cul-de-sacs into account. Um, because you can have a maximum of a 600 foot cul-de-sac and then have three cul-de-sacs off of that each 600 feet, which defeats the purpose of having the regulation in there. Um, and there's a lot of communities that have that. And we've run into it a couple of times in the past couple of months. Uh, and the last thing is, uh, again, when municipalities are looking at subdivision land development ordinances, I believe they are looking at them as residential developments for the most part. And they're their standards and regulations are on residential. Uh, we're getting a lot of these large warehouses now, um, million square feet. There's uh, the new, um, one new warehouse in Jessup. It's a mile and two tenths around the warehouse. Uh, the requirements are usually four, five or 600 feet from the property line for a fire hydrant. Well, that doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, if we went by that standard in the one development in Jessup, the closest fire hydrant to the building would have been about a mile away wow. because the property line was that far away with the parking. So, uh, you know, as a fire chief, this is a bugaboo of mine. And I did get Jessup to adopt an ordinance that there has to be a fire hydrant within 600 feet of the building. And then for every, um, 100,000 square feet of the building, they need an additional hydrant. And so far the developers have been really uh, attuned to that and they've been doing it without any consequence. So, uh, okay, so that's um, all of it on page 12 and 13, Lehigh Valley Medical Center. Um, this is the new medical building that's going in, in uh, uh, Dixon City right off of Interstate 881. Uh, they're actually doing a four-story building instead of a three-story building now. So they're gonna need a variance from the borough for height on that. Um, also, the other big thing is 
The plan is showing 349 off street parking spaces. According to the ordinance, only 177 are required. So that's nearly double uh, what they need. And, you know, we've always had this discussion about overbuilding parking lots. So I'm just recommending that they take a look at that uh, because it's additional water runoff and additional point source pollution that has to be addressed uh, to heat sink issue. Plus, the majority of the parking is in front of the hospital, um, right up to the road. And, you know, for a development like this, and Dixon is coming in with, uh, in their letters that uh, in correspondence, they're coming in for funding to do a gateway project along that part of Main Street. Yeah. So come in and plant trees and put pretty shrubs up and things like that. And then you're going to have a hospital with parking right up to the curb. Right. Why don't they put the hospital in a different, like behind it? Well, <laughs> the, the problem is the original building, they're yeah. still using and they're adding on to it. Right. Yeah. The original building, all the parking was in front. Right. Um, okay. They are putting some parking in the back, but they're also bringing the parking right out to the, the sidewalk. So we're just recommending since they have more than they need, they might want to look at that and uh, they, they can eliminate, uh, I don't believe I wrote it in here, but they can eliminate like 30 spaces, yeah. and not lose anything and address the issue of, uh, you know, having a gateway. So. Right. Steve, I have one comment. Uh, when <clears throat> the Wright Center took over the old giant uh, and then it was Banco Warehouse on Salt Washington Avenue, they put in a gigantic parking lot. And I said, I, I had no clue why they were doing it. But every time I drive by there, I don't, there's not a space open in the lot. There's hundreds of parking spaces. So unless their projections of use maybe dictate this, I, I don't know. But I agree with you. If it's not needed, it should be cut back. But I, the right center, I, I can't believe how many cars are parked there every day. I mean, it's constantly filled. Yeah. There, so is the one in German when I drive by. Yeah. Same thing. You know what I mean? So unless their projections on patients or something dictates, you know, more than the requirements, I'm not saying they're right or wrong. Steve gives a great analysis here. If they're not needed, you know, 177, do 200, do 225. You really need 350, but maybe they do. I don't know. So I'm not deferring, but Steve is right. If it's not needed, it is a big taxation on the infrastructure and the environment and everything else. Thanks, Jen. Yep. Okay, on page 28 and 29, uh, lands of Roop in Carbondale Township. Uh, this is a strange development. It's on number seven road in Carbondale Township. And it also fronts out to Carbondale Road. Um, there are five parcels there now. They want to subdivide one uh, to create six parcels. Three of the parcels are already developed. Uh, two of those parcels are substandard in lot size. As part of the subdivision, they're going to increase the standards for those two, or increase the acreage for those two lots. When I did the review, uh, they showed that there was public sewer, but they did not mention public water. Uh, the two lots that they were increasing the lot size on, um, I wasn't sure, as I said, if they had on-lot water. And the ordinance for either on-lot water and or on-lot sewer, uh, they would not meet the requirement even with the expansions. So they're, because they were increasing the size but not getting to the requirement, they would need variances. Also, the fifth lot that they were subdividing had access to number seven road on one side and through a 20 foot easement off of Carbonell road on the other side. In cutting it in half, they eliminated the access to number seven road, which then made the lot on Carbondale road non-conforming because it doesn't front on a public street. They have an easement, but that's the only access. So they would need a, a variance on that, which uh, most municipalities issue them. It's not a big deal, um, but the, Concern is that resultant lot still could be subdivided into three other lots. So when I sent the uh, draft review to Mandola Associates, they got back to me. Those two lots that I looked at that might be substandard because they didn't have on lot water do have central water. So that requirement goes away. 
Also, they're going to address the access to the lot number five uh, that it can't be further subdivided. So those issues went away. So it's going from a withhold to a conditional approval. And this all happened after I put the packets together so I could not make that correction. Steve, you have, you have Carbondale City checked in, just so you know. What? Okay, I will go back and change that. It is Carbondale Township. Yeah. And last one on page 41, um, just a note. This is Lands of LaBelle in North Abington. It's a two lot subdivision. We are recommending approval of it. Uh, but just to know that I got the plans a week after the supervisors approved them. <laughs> so we're letting the township know, and I already let the developer know that this could have been a problem. And the developer is an attorney, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I said, you know, this could have been a problem if we found an issue with it that we're getting it after the fact. Uh, we have 30 days under Act 247 to review a plan before anybody's supposed to take any action. On it. So uh, the other note, and I've been noticing this on about a half dozen plans that I did, they're still referencing the 1973-1974 floodplain ordinance maps. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the new maps went into effect August 5th, so I'm just noting that. Um, it's not really making a difference for any of the plans we've gotten so far. Uh, they've all been still in a non-flood area. That's it. Yeah. Reviews. Anybody have any questions on any of the reviews? No. Hearing none, to entertain a motion to approve the reviews as uh, submitted by the staff. I'll make a motion to approve. There is second. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Cindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, and I don't know. I think there was one LaBelle in there. Do you want me to note that you abstained? If it is. is there a LaBella? I thought I saw one. Well, that's Paul. The one is a lands of LaBelle, but it's not, I don't think it's a LaBella. I, I looked through them. I didn't see any LaBellas. Okay. Because I did have somebody come in. Maybe it was just the stamp plans. That was from last month, right? Okay. Okay, right. We might you might have got one in for signature. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see anything because I always check just to make oh, sure. Okay. If, if he does come across one, John, he'll make sure you abstained on it. Absolutely. But I think we're good this month. <laughs> okay. Um, other business. One item. And then Brenda, are you still there? Maybe you can I'm shed here. some light. I'm here. Maybe, maybe you can shed, shed some light on it since we have a staff member to leave us already. How'd we do on the budget? Um, and uh, what are we going to do about the uh, new staff? So we oh, have big, big raises for everybody. Oh, well, big raises! Yes, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If I, if I could give out the raises, they would all have very, very large raises. Yes, <laughs> especially um, you know this department um, has been working really, really hard. Um, not sure if everyone was, uh, is aware, but we received almost $19 million in county relief block grant funding, and it's being administered out of this department. So we're all kind of going a little bit crazy, but it's all good. We want to make sure that the money is impactful um, to the residents of Lackawanna County and, and benefits them. Um, so we're, you know, Mary Liz is working really, really hard um, in, in, in helping us. She's doing a lot of the nonprofit grants right now, administering those. Steve is, you know, reviewing plans and, uh, you know, he's doing a great job as he always does. So um, the budget was passed. Um, again, uh, I'm not sure what will happen with the raises that would happen in, in 2021. And, and that would be, um, you know, determined by um, the, the commissioners. Um, any other, oh, okay, staffing, you asked me. So we have assistant planner, we lost Joanne Payne. Um, so we have that position open if anyone um, knows of anyone that could be a candidate or would be interested in applying, that's on our county website. Um, transportation planner, um, we have been, we did interview an individual, um, we're gonna be making a decision. That's a very difficult position. Um, to, um, to find a candidate for, given the specialties, um, skills that you need. 
for both, even the assistant planner and, and the transportation planner. So we're hoping um, to possibly also start an internship, a paid internship um, within the department and reaching out to um, the various schools that offer programs related. So then that might help us to, um, you know, backfill in individuals as well. So I don't have anything definitive, but again, you know, would appreciate your help if you know anyone that could potentially be a good candidate for, to be part of the, you know, the transportation and planning. I know um, letters sometimes fall on deaf ears down the hall, but <laughs> Would it be of any value for us to send a letter down to the commissioners, uh, you know, requesting raises for the staff, considering what's been going on, and to even increase the, the, the pay for some of these positions, just like because Joanne left us for what? More money. It's like, you can't hold people, you know? I mean, is there any value to doing this, Brenda? I know in the past it's been a little tough, but I mean, if you, if, if you think it's a value, I think we're all on board on doing that. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you on that and maybe we can take it on, um, you know, off to the side, do another little meeting together. We can maybe kind of brainstorm about how we think we could maybe restructure the department and that might be something that's potential as well, where then, you know, taking the salaries that we have and, and maybe looking at um, how we could um, maybe increase them in doing that. Because I mean, because that includes both you, Steve, Liz, and these two vacant positions. I mean, we've got to we've got to do something to keep good people. Yes, we do. And I, to attract to attract new people. I, <laughs> and uh, uh, to feed off what you're saying there, Harry, that that's how we run it in Clark Summit. When you have good quality people that do above and beyond, you want to make sure you maintain them, and financially, that's how you do it. You're exactly right there. Okay. Um, please get to us. I mean, well, I will. Thank you. I appreciate it. We can work something out. Yes, absolutely. And we have a great team. And, and, and like I said, you nice. know, Mary Liz and Steve, they, they do a, f a phenomenal job. And, um, you know, we, we are really trying to get everything accomplished that we need to in the next three weeks to make sure all of our money is spent um, wisely and that it's all spent and that also we continue to do our regular jobs, which we're doing here every day. So, I mean, where else were they going to put an $18 million project? You got another department down there, they're going to handle something like that. I don't think so. Right. No. no, no. Okay. And they, and they're getting away with it for no cost. Right. Cause they're all multitasking. Exactly. Now, come on. Exactly. That's fair, fair. You know, they are. Okay. They are. I, I preach it with people here. So, I mean, but please get to us. I mean, we will, I don't care if it's letters, uh, Zoom meeting, whatever it takes to, to talk to the guys uh, right. and the girls too about it. Mm -hmm. We need to do something. Hey, Harry, get it done before April so I can get a raise before I retire. I was just going to say, <laughs> I'm going to retire and we'll have another position to fill. <laughs> That's going to be possible. I don't know. There's a rumor going around the building that I'm leaving too. I don't know who made that one up, but <laughs> oh god, no! I actually could retire too. I'm I'm qualify. So <laughs> yeah. Mary Liz, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. My and, husband tells yeah. me I can't leave because I we need to be on my insurance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's always a good hang up there. That's good. Right. Yeah, in the last in the last in the last two weeks, Steve Sola and I have both had about three or four different people ask us what happened to Mary Liz. We heard she quit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Too much. A much. Mill spinning. Too much. Amazing. Okay. Anyway, that fake news. Yeah. Any, yeah. More fake news. Is there yeah. any other uh, um, news to, or news or information or work or ideas to come before the commission? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I think the last time we discussed this actually was in February, our last in-person meeting, where I think some reappointments were made and so on and so forth. And they weren't quite right. And we're still down a member. Uh, and I, I think uh, Steve or some reported that they were looking into this to get it all straightened out because there was a rush at the end of the previous administration to do some stuff. And I don't think it really caught up to the, what, what should be done. So uh, we're down a member, which hurt, hurts with the quorums and uh, you know, the, the terms, 
I don't, I, I don't think they're right either. You know what I'm saying? Like some are expired, some have been extended and they don't match up with the way that the staggering a term. So I don't know if that's possible to get it straightened out, but uh, it's been on my mind for a while. Cause we're always, you scramble because people have, you know, you, you try to have a quorum. Some days we have six or seven, some days we scramble for, for, for uh, five. So it, it's hard. So that's, that's my comment. I can speak to that. So, okay, Brenda. Uh, it, it is very important to the commissioners to get our boards in order. Um, and good. there was a lot of scrambling that happened in, in the previous um, it, it administration. Um, so we are diligently going through each okay. board and authority and addressing it. Um, our hope is in, in January, we will be able to have a, every one of them set straight so that, um, you know, all of the, the reappointments are done and they're done properly and everything's in line. So, um, you know, I can definitely assure you that we will have that fixed next year. Thanks, Brenda. And and maybe get another member to fill us, fill us out? Yes, absolutely. Great. Thank yep. you very much. Thank you. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. Okay, no problem there. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Was there any region we're lacking someone in, Harry? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, I think we were looking for Carbondale because that's the only area. Like something up Valley. Up Rose, valley, like Rose had mentioned Paul Kazmarsik. He's a school board member. Uh, he used to be the principal of the high school years ago when I was there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is he, is a, he is a great guy. I mean, I don't know. You know, Rose, I guess, knows him too, if he'd be interested. Okay. Valley. All right. Any other comments? Sure. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, just one thing, Harry, before, just to let the board know, um, with the pandemic and everything, with the governor's orders, we're going to be changing how we staff the office. Um, Brenda put together a list. The community development side of the office will be mostly in on Mondays and Tuesdays. The planning side will be mostly in on Thursdays and Fridays with uh, nobody in on Wednesday. And uh, the other times we'll be working from home. The county did buy or purchase uh, surfaces. Steve Solon and I just got ours this morning. That's why there was a little bit of confusion trying to get set up, but uh, we'll be able to work from home. So we will physically be in the office at least two days a week. Steve, would you say they purchased for you guys? Surface, surface computers. Oh, surfaces, Microsoft Surface. Yeah. 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 No. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. They didn't show us how to use them. They just put them up there. Steve, you can come over. I'll give you a tutorial. <laughs> just download the 150 page uh, learning guide from, from online. <laughs> I will say they're actually one of the easier um, laptops to, to use, and they're light, so they're they're easy to 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 take with you. So I, I like it. You should you'll end up liking it, Steve. I know you're just gonna love it and never ever want a desktop again. <laughs> you know, I I'm surprised as how much I can do on my iPhone because I'm I participate in all my meetings by my iphone and it's it's pretty it's pretty adaptable to all these you know zoom microsoft team uh skype and different other ones it's 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 adaptable and it works pretty well you know yeah so. i'll give you a little tidbit that i learned when i first when we were working home when we had the stay-at-home order in the iphone i use it as as well a lot for work and in the camera, you can actually, or in the notes, if you click on the camera, you can scan a document on your iPhone. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So if you go to your notes and then you'll see a camera icon, you click on it and it says scan document and it works really, really well to have a scanner on the fly. Yeah. Wow. That's good information to know. Thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. <laughs> I use it a lot. <laughs> good. Any other comments? Hearing none, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Done. Second. Seconded. Second. Very good. Okay. Well, nice. Merry Christmas to everybody and Merry have Christmas. a wonderful holiday. Yes. Merry Merry Christmas. Everyone have a great Christmas. Thank you. Bye. Stay Merry safe. Bye. Bye. Stay Bye. safe. Bye. Bye. Talk to you guys Bye. next year. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hopefully it'll be a better one. Bye. Bye-bye.
拜拜。Bye.